sounds like the SEC is seriously considering requiring more detailed thorough injury reports from rosters, right? Which uh, Josh Heupel would certainly not like because Josh Heupel employs more gamesmanship than any coach I've ever seen. Um, how serious is that talk? And do you think that could harm a coach like Josh Heupel who tries to use gamesmanship? Uh, it's very serious. Uh, and in fact, um, uh, Missouri, by the way, issues an injury report on Thursday. And, and Eli Drink would said they will continue to do that. That's what the SEC says. Uh, the Big Ten issued injury reports last year. So, and, and, and Sankey's in favor of that. I could tell by his tenor by saying that there's so much gambling going on uh, that, that uh, we need to make sure that we protect our athletes. Uh, and that the, the college athlete, unlike the pro athlete, the pro athlete can be more isolated because he's got a family when he goes back home uh, to his wife, his kids, whatever. The college athlete has to go to, or he's supposed to go to class and he's surrounded by people. He sees more people. And there are more people that could get to him about some gambling issue. So I think they're going to have the injury report. Sankey was asked, do you think you'll put one in place to implement this fall? And he said, look, I don't know. We'll see. He said, uh, we'll do it when we're ready, but I don't know when we're going to be ready to do it. This is also something that the SEC is looking at it, but I know that the SEC would also like for it to be NCAA wide. And I don't know that it will get to that point. Uh, but and also the injury report, as was mentioned by Sankey, would be focused on conference games only. You wouldn't necessarily have to do it if you're playing a non-conference game because the opponent may not be releasing an injury report. So it would be a conference wide and only conference games in which you would have to do this. Because I'm sure that Vegas wouldn't be able to come up with a line because they don't have any plants if the University of Tennessee were to play, I don't know, Southern California or UCLA, I'm sure they don't have any plans at the big time football uh, programs, right? Right, Jimmy? Of course not. The, the one thing that I'm interested in, <laughs> I hadn't heard much about, and, and I did ask, thank you, Becky, that, that's trying to have um, not allowing prop bets with college athletes. There have been two states that have banned that. There have been college athletes that have received death threats from people uh, because they dropped a touchdown pass or because they missed a free throw and it cost somebody the line. So you got so many prop bets out there. And when these college athletes get subjected to that, uh, as I mentioned, two states have banned prop betting for college athletes. Uh, Sankey said they're kind of looking at it, but he didn't. It, it, it's not a, a top priority for the SEC. At least it didn't sound like it right now. Okay. Uh, Jimmy's appearance brought to you in part by our good friend, Ray Varner Ford. He brings you Jimmy each and every Wednesday. I got something along those lines. I want to throw it Jimmy right after this 15 seconds, learn more about Ray Varner Ford. All wheel drive 31, 24, Ford edge, all wheel drive 37, 975, 24 F two fifty four before crew cab 54, seven sixty Ray Varner Ford, your East Tennessee Ford dealership. Jimmy, uh, I was pretty young when I worked with you. Uh, I'm sure I made mistakes. I would like to think of a person that uh, considered myself, uh, that I kept my word of integrity, a 19 year old son. I think he has integrity too, but both of us at that age, I could see how a prop bet would be confusing. Wait, my team still wins. I don't let any of my friends down and I get to take my girlfriend out on a nice date and nobody got hurt. The prop bet thing is scary. I would argue that the SEC has a, a bigger fish to fry with uh, gambling than it does even NIL. There are, so, there are thousands of people that could be involved, Jimmy. I think that is super scary. I've never asked your thoughts. No, I, I think you're right about that. Well, that's what got Jonte Porter uh, in trouble with the NBA. It's what got him banned from the NBA because uh, he faked an injury or faked an illness and allowed somebody close to him to profit off of that. To, to how much money, I don't know. Uh, but that's the concern about getting into the college athletes. And there's no question that there are some gambling folks that, that uh, they get to them. 
uh, maybe it's through another student, a runner, a friend, whatever, uh, they're able to get to them. Maybe it's maybe it's through a booster that's developed a relationship with the player. I, I think it is scary. And I think the SEC and other conferences should uh, take a serious look at this. And I, I would be in favor of banning prop bets for college athletes in particular when you know they're getting death threats uh, whenever one of their plays impacts the line and ticks off a better who loses the bet. So um, I think they should take that very seriously. Yeah, it's interesting you say that, Jimmy, because you're right, John T. Porter, we're talking he probably whatever what he allowed to be wagered is nowhere close to the generational wealth you can make playing in the NBA, which by far produces the most yes. generational wealth for athletes of any sport. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're gonna yeah. do that with the NBA, imagine what college football players, most of whom do not make generational NIL money, the vast majority of whom make enough money to buy themselves a few nice things maybe, and that's it. That's a much scarier situation with prop bets. Yes, it, it is. You make a good point. I, I think that's correct. And um, so that's why I think they need to jump into this. And and, and right away, I think it's a uh, – they talked about putting some uh, items on the back burner, like whether to play eight or nine conference games. They should not put this on the back burner. This should be right up front. This should be something they should tackle now because you, there's legal sports betting, there's illegal sports betting. But the, the common thing is there is sports betting. There's a ton of sports betting going on. And the legal sports betting has made it so much easier for people. And nobody likes to lose a lot of bets, right? So they can take any kind of inside information they can get. Uh, I think it's a dangerous proposition. I think the SEC needs to address it right away. Okay. I want everybody to take three seconds to think about this and realize that I haven't gone crazy. I don't think. Will we have gambling on commitments? Will we one day have this Nico Ia Maliava is going to commit to Tennessee? I'm putting 20 bucks down on that because I heard from a good source. Will we ever have that? I'm surprised that Vegas didn't put money on that already. Uh, to answer your question, yes, yeah, I, I think uh, I think we will see that as well. Um, and it's like, what can you not bet? Look at look at all these crazy bets you get from a Super Bowl, right? How long's the national anthem? Who's going to score the first touchdown? Who's going to drop a pass? They got all kind of crazy prop bets for a Super Bowl, and I realize that's a a unique example. But yeah, I think it could um, mold into: Is this guy going to commit? Heck, it may even. Well, this would be harder. How many years is he going to stay at that school before he enters the portal? Now you got to wait a long time to cash in on that one, so maybe they don't go in that direction. But uh, yeah, I, I could see betting on whether or not a, a player commits to a particular school. I mean, let's turn to Caleb for a let's turn to Caleb for a second because he does have a gambling problem. Caleb, what do you think? <laughs> I do not have a gambling problem. Yes, I think that'll. I think that's going to get out there, and I think that's going to happen very, very soon. And um. It is true. Someone mentioned it. You know, you can bet on WWE outcomes, and it turns out there are people involved in the creative team in WWE that bet on the outcomes. They determine the outcomes, and then they get to go bet on the outcomes that they yeah. determined <laughs> happening right now. So it's 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 absolutely insane. And I want to make something clear because this goes to the Pete roasting in the '80s um, when people were like, "Oh, well, he only bet on himself to win." Guys, if you're betting on yourself. It's as bad as throwing it because you're still skewing the lines and the odds when it comes to Vegas. So it still is as dangerous of a proposition, which is why baseball said, and which is why college football has to say, I don't care how you bet, who you bet on, or what your bet was. If you bet on the sport you're playing, lifetime ban. Period. End of story. Yeah, and, and the thing that you're talking about with Pete Rose – so if he's betting on the Reds, maybe he uses a relief pitcher whose arm is worn out and he probably shouldn't use him. But by golly, he's going to try to win that game because he's bet on it. So he impacts his roster management. He impacts who he plays. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any excuse for it. And um, and Pete Rose has obviously bet on, on the Reds. He lied about bet on the Reds, and I didn't have a problem with him getting a lifetime ban. 
Jimmy, other stories that you'll be working on um, and storylines that you'll be following that we can uh, look forward to some coverage on that? Well, we've touched on most of it. It's the roster management. It's revenue sharing. It's injury report. It's the SEC going from eight to nine games if they do that. Uh, it um, Those are some of the things to look for. Uh, I, um, I did find one, one thing I did do was interviewing Danny White, and I had not talked to him about this before. I was talking to him about his theory in hiring coaches. I said, look, in, in looking at your history, you hire up-and-coming coaches, and you hire coaches in the sports where you could identify it that score points. You hire a football coach who can score points. You did it at Buffalo. You did it at uh, Tennessee with Heupel. Uh, you, you bring in a basketball coach who likes to shoot three-pointers and press. He said, yeah. He said, I hadn't really thought about it, but now that you mentioned this, I do hire up and coming coaches. I hire coaches that can score points because you know why? I'm in marketing and fans like to see points on the board. So, yes, I do that. Okay. So, um, and by the okay, way, so he was, the success he was, of the athletic department's he, unbelievable. Yes. Now, he was joking, though. He's thought about that he's the entertaining athletic director that goes up and down the court or field. It's kind. Of, it's like when Knox was named Knox Kiffin. I'm like, come on, Lane. Seriously. I mean, everybody knows it's because of Knox. I mean, come on. Lane, Lane, I mean, I told him. I said, Lane, come on. Everybody knows. <laughs> so, do, you, do you believe he was playing a little bit coy with you? Well, I Oh, yeah, not just a little. I, he, he knew. I just don't know that he's been asked about that. But when I, but it, it was almost like your hands in the cookie jar. I didn't realize my hand was in that cookie jar. Uh, yes, it was. So, oh, yeah, I, I think he knew, and that's been his plan. And I mean, even going back to Buffalo with Nate Oates and Lance Leopold, he has hired coaches that know how to score points and play an exciting brand of basketball or football. Now, that's harder to quantify than like hiring a tennis coach or a track coach, right? But in the sports where you can have offense and score points, uh, he is very much about leaning toward the offensive-minded coach that could put points on the board. I will say this, though. He doesn't hire coaches that are married to that because with Josh Heupel, we've all talked about how he, he does run the football. He does uh, play an attacking style of defense. And look at the baseball team. I think the pitching may be the difference. So, Jimmy, I know you got to get out of here, buddy. I appreciate your time as always. Uh, we look forward to visiting with you uh, next week because there's more news that comes out of this than SEC Media Days, which is like a media convention. So, uh, Jimmy, <laughs> have a fantastic, safe trip, buddy. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Caleb. Y'all take care. Appreciate you.